So I'm not 100% sure if this is true, but as far as I can tell, in this very nondescript box right here is the most powerful laptop in the world. So we're talking eight cores from AMD and an RTX 3080 Max P. So that's, you know, she's got lots of power and it's also a 16 gigabyte version, which is more than you even get on the desktop card. So let's open her up and see what it's like. It should be noted that this is a pre-production unit. I'm guessing that there would be some kind of branding on here on the final one. The only writing is just our little asset tag here and that's for our internal system. That didn't come on it. But, what? oh, that's upside down. Nice. <laughs> yeah, this is my job and I do it good. Power brick, 230 watts. Now compared to laptops of yesteryear, this might not seem like all that much power. The new AMD processors are just so power efficient that like you don't need to pump 200 watts into them. They run real fast at like 50. We also get a Euro power plug, which is not exactly useful for us, but I brought one of these and that's about it in here besides the laptop. Which again is about as black and nondescript as possible. We get, I guess, the serial number from Clevo and that's about it. So this one right here is for XMG and it's for Germany, which I guess I can just open it up right now and show you. Means the keyboard's not all that useful if you are me and don't know German. <laughs> so there's... There's a couple things here that um, are slightly inconvenient for using it. So for one, uh, it's Q-W-E-R-T-Z. Normally Y would be there. These are all different and all of the stuff up here is just wrong. We're getting a bit ahead of ourselves here though. So for IO on the side, just single USB type A, headphone, microphone. On the back, you get USB type C. So no Thunderbolt because it's AMD. You technically can get that, but practically you don't. And also full size HDMI. It should be noted that both of these go directly to the GPU. So you have like hard wire between your external monitor and the GPU in here. No going through the iGPU nonsense. That HDMI 2.1? 2.1 with HDCP 2.3. So awesome. Yeah, this guy right here, real good one. You also get 2.5 gigabit LAN, which is another good job. And then you also get full size SD card and two more type A's. Overall, that's really good for a laptop. <laughs> I guess what else do we have to say? It's shockingly light. So this is 2.1 kilograms. And for context, the good old XPS 15 here is 2.05 kilograms. Now, you do get a mostly aluminum construction, so like, Back here is aluminum. The top up here is also aluminum, although the bottom is all plastic. The actual chassis stiffness though, and if you look here, is very good. Actually, I'll take it off of, people always complain when I do it on the map. Very, very rigid. Quite well built. Clevo's really like stepped it up lately. I feel like a couple years ago, everything that they made was just you could tell that it was not designed great. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, not, desi not designed great, just like that sentence. And just like the segue to our sponsor, ErgoShare. <laughs> Thanks to Autonomous for sponsoring this video. The ErgoChair 2 by Autonomous is a fully customizable office chair designed to provide back support, prevent back pain, and improve posture. Their patented adjustable lumbar system uses a simple handle to dial in the perfect amount of support and features a breathable, durable mesh fabric to optimize comfort and airflow. They're stylish, extremely functional, and offers a variety of adjustments, all at a great price point. So click the link below to get 8% off your Ergo Chair 2 by using code ergochair08. All right, let's power this guy up. I've actually been using it a fair bit lately. I got this in to compare to the Zephyrus G15. Yeah, it's pretty thick. Dang it, Brandon. <laughs> This is your fault. No, it's not. It's not set this background. I gave you this laptop for B-roll. Yep, and it was already there when I got it. Who added this then? Probably Jake or something. I don't know. Madison? 
Maybe Madison. Madison's fault. Blaming Madison! Um, how do I turn on keyboard brightness? Oh, that's not what I want. Oh, no. How do I turn this off? Oh, what the heck? So this is one of those things where knowing what your function buttons actually do comes in pretty handy. Uh, I'm not totally sure how to stop this. Oh, magnifier. Okay, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not what that button's supposed to do. <laughs> Let's see if I can get the keyboard lights on here though. There we go. And you have a lot of options of how to customize it. Although customizing it is kind of the main draw of this laptop, so various clevos, you can kind of do different things with different ones, and XMG's whole thing is basically, once you buy it, you can do whatever you want to it. They don't really care. So, memory overclocking, that's a thing that you can do in the BIOS. Actual overclocking of the CPU and the GPU. It's this really, really new age type of overclocking. That's called dragging every slider over to the right as far as it goes. Uh, can you turn on the CASA module that's over there? Here we go. Boop, 80 watts on the CPU. Boom, done. Uh, dynamic boost. Let's turn that all the way up, 15 watts. Unlock configurable TDP, I think we shall, 135 watts. So you might be thinking 135 watts for the GPU that's not 150, but that's where the dynamic boost comes in. So you can steal 15 watts from the CPU, give it to the GPU, boom, it's 150 watts. So there are situations where you might not want to just take every slider all the way over. So kind of depending on how much GPU or CPU you're using in a specific given task, it's nice to be able to just tune it how you want. And what games do we have? We're going to install and play Valheim because that's what I want to do. It is only 500 gigabytes, but like we have an Intel Wi-Fi 6 chip in here, which is basically the best thing that Intel makes right now. <laughs> and the seed is going to be 6969, 6969, done. <laughs> now, one of the really beautiful things about this laptop is the screen. So we get 1440p at 165 Hertz, which currently is basically the best that you can do for gaming on a laptop. Don't go for 4K, it's dumb. What is a slight letdown with this one right here is it has a 95% coverage of the sRGB spectrum, which is not great right now. It's not the most exciting game at the start. We're just gonna punch some trees and then probably leave. This is very, very good. I am not surprised at all, but we have absolute all of the graphics up as high as they'll go. I will turn off motion blur though. This thing is really loud. Let's find someone to punch. Hey, Mr. Grayling. Bam. Oh my God, this guy is not powerful at all. Looks like 80 to 90 FPS, sometimes dropping into the mid 70s. This on much lower settings on my computer, which has a GTX 1080, is sitting around like 40, 50 FPS. I don't know how much else we need to do, although I do really want to try and sneak attack a deer. It's actually almost more difficult because I have so much less vegetation on my computer. I'm going to turn down some of those dials. <laughs> Custom profiles, we don't need 80 watts in the processor right now. So let's just try turning that down a bit to 50 watts. Okay, deer, where are you? Wow, it really did not quiet down. So the GPU is currently, wow, it's at 85 degrees. I guess that we do have it like going as fast as it can. Like we're sitting around 1600 megahertz right now. In my testing though, this thing was able to do between 10 to up to 30% faster than the Zephyrus G15. So like that extra sound is netting you a bunch of power. It should be pretty easy if you wanted to do the tuning that way to turn everything down just a little bit, it can be what you want it to be. Oh, there's a deer. Okay, sneak attack time. They ran. All right, I'm calling it no deer sneak attack. I'm sorry, everyone involved. But this is basically a total weapon as far as it comes to gaming. The combination of this GPU and this screen, it's friggin' wicked. Now, I do have some light complaints 
about the keyboard here. It has two millimeters of actuation and it does have quite a nice little snap to it, but I have a lot of trouble with it. I am... Yeah, I think that the problem is just that the actual stabilization of the various keys is not amazing. So like you can see here, like A, it kind of just moves all around. Well, they all kind of just move around. So it's kind of hard to tell when you have this much slop in a key. What they did get really good though, is this trackpad. For a gaming laptop, it's large, it tracks well, and there's no palm rejection issues. So we have an AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX. Right now it's reporting an H, but it is an HX, I am told. It's just wrong <laughs> in the BIOS. Um, we also have 32 gigabytes of memory on this one. You can't upgrade it to 64. Uh, let's see here, 500 gigabyte SSD. I would like to have a bit more than that given how OP everything else is. And the good old 3080 Max-P, even though it's not called Max-P anymore, but it's a powerful one that has 16 gigabytes of RAM. Oh, speakers. We need to do the speakers, YouTube. I'm gonna say underwhelming. That's actually like not bad though. Okay, but I'm gonna open up the XPS 15 here and see how it compares. So this is the XMG. Oh, wow. Not, not even a competition. That's a, uh, so yeah, speakers are mediocre. <laughs> Given the size of this thing, you'd think they could have fit like a sub or two in there. This is what I'm excited to do though. I actually have not taken this thing apart yet, even though I have done a fair bit of testing on it. So I know that it's fast, but I don't know why it's fast yet. There's kind of one of two options. The first is that Clevo has done an excellent job of designing it. And the second is that AMD has done an excellent job with their new processors. Disassembly seems very easy so far. And I'm guessing if you're the kind of person that buys this, you're also the kind of person that upgrades your laptop. Wow, that's a lot less cooling than I was expecting. If you had this much cooling on an Intel processor that had eight cores and was a high spec one, it would die. Now we have four heat pipes in total. So four of them are going to the GPU and going across the right over here. We do have massive heat sinks. They're really thick. So that's probably where the majority of the heat is going out. But I'm pretty surprised that like, I was expecting you to have like nine heat pipes that are snaking all across the whole thing, but I guess you just don't need it. Looks like upgradability overall is excellent. So we have our single SSD here and then another one fits in right there. You have two sodium slots, so you want more RAM, slot it in. Wi-Fi cards right there and we've got this massive battery. 93 watt hours and I honestly don't know what that will get you. I'm, hmm. Hey Jono. Can I just battery test this thing and then we can put the thing right here? Sure. So if it's like seven hours, that's pretty good, I guess. But chances are if you turn on anything 3D, it dies. Whereas if it's like 10 hours, the number that's right here, then we're very impressed. Good job. <laughs> wow. I am genuinely shocked that this thing is able to keep it cool. Down here, we've got those underwhelming subwoofers and I think that's about it. I don't know if I'd recommend buying it. <laughs> uh, if you're the kind of person that really loves tweaking dials, it's pretty freaking awesome. And if you're the kind of person that likes just really, really powerful laptops, I might recommend getting it, you know, with a keyboard that matches your region. But <laughs> aside from that, this thing's freaking awesome. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more super duper powerful laptops, I don't know, hit a like there and have a great old day. See you later.